the old political and historical issues between the two people are things that I really don't want to go into, so you'll have to read about it online or ask somebody. But it's really, dif really difficult and complicated. It begins with a long, long time, maybe even a hundred years, I'm sorry, I don't remember the exact uh, number of years right now, of occupation by the Russians. Then Nazi Germany came along and saved Estonia. They're perceived as basically saviors. And then the Russians came back and controlled Estonia in the Soviet fashion up to the fall of the Soviet Union. So Estonians don't li really like Russians. On the other end, the Russians don't really like Estonians for various reasons. And again, nothing against the two people. In Israel, about a fifth of the population or a sixth of the population are Russians or people who originally came from Russia. But um, I really sat down and tried to understand what was going on in there. And I tried to understand which side I like more. And every time I reached a conclusion on one side that I like more, I saw something childish being done by the other side, and I changed sides. Eventually I decided I can't pick sides. So this is the most I'm going to talk about the politics. You'll have to research the history yourself. And honestly, coming from Israel, I have my own problems. So let's move on. Now, this riot is up in the streets. At the same time, which is amazing, people see posts to the Russian forums, blogs, generally saying, hey, look what, and this is a quote, the fucking Estonian fascists, or Nazis, depending on your preference, did. Now, Russians were pissed. Russians really take to heart the 20 or 30 million uh, soldiers they lost during the Second World War. So the blogosphere is full of messages, and the Russian population basically follows and attacks. So they said, hey, this is not a group of hackers or cyber terrorists or whatever else you want to call them. This is a population attacking us. This is a riot. And we're going to talk about this a little bit more. So all these really websites, let's call them this, the Russian-speaking or Russian-language blogosphere came alive. It was fired up. It was pissed. Now, the Estonians, on the other hand, said, look, we have been responding in emergency mode. We haven't slept for two or three days. We need to take a hold of the situation and go to routine mode. Routine mode is on Monday. This was a lucky strike. The attack, well, maybe it was lucky, maybe it wasn't. The attack happened on a weekend. We need to make sure Monday morning the government is operational, the country is operational, everything works. So by order of a very annoyed <laughs> Estonian third manager, he wasn't the direct commanding officer or anything, they all went on to sleep. They all said, we'll be back here 6 a.m. tomorrow morning on Monday morning and make sure everything works for 8 a.m. Now, this is from um, <laughs> an Estonian newspaper, which I don't have the address for yet. And that's why this presentation, if you get it online, will not have this picture there because of copyright issues until I find it. But I think it's very cool. So let's analyze. You have this supposedly Russian young man with his Kalachnikov or AK-47, depending if you're from the States or not. And he's basically firing at his computer screen because he's pissed what he's seeing. I'm just, you know. And OK, let's move on. It's a very cool picture, you got to admit. So that's basically the Russian blogosphere. I really wish the artist could have heard your, your applause, but... So, this is um, written in Latin rather than Russian. Pinguem Estoniske Servera, I guess. And if you search for that on Google, you will still find, find thousands of websites. Some of them disappeared that basically instruct people on how to attack. Now, any Russian or Russian-speaking guy or girl who can read that for us, please? Anybody? 
This is a very shy crowd. Seriously, I had a lecture yesterday and everybody was shy as well. Oh, come on! Oh, well. So, basically, um, this tells them um, to attack. They're pissed, right? If you want to get back at people, etc. And it instructs them to open a command window or a console window and do the following command, which is ping on an Estonian server. Now, this may seem silly, but when the entire Eston uh, sorry, Russian blogosphere goes and does ping, enter, app, ping, enter, up, enter, up, enter, up, enter, up, enter, up, enter, it may sound silly, it may be pointless and useless, but hey, enough of this and some DSL line will go down. <laughs> and honestly, it got them all fired up, and that was the important thing. So let's look at some tools. This was just a batch script.bat that automated it and put it in a loop, which is pretty cool, I suppose. You could download a lot of other scripts, a lot of other tools, and the interesting thing is that as the Russian blogosphere got fired up, more and more people got involved. And as more and more people got involved, naturally, more and more tools were released. This was made very, very easy. <coughs> Sorry. It was made very, very easy for people to attack Estonia. They didn't need to be experts. Now, the interesting thing about the Russian blogosphere is that there appeared, as the same way that everything appeared all over the Russian blogosphere and tell, told people how to attack and why to attack, and got them all fired up, there were periodic updates. They basically, uh, either this was the first self-adjusting, self-learning attack that I've personally ever seen, or it was responding to the defender's action in Estonia. So, your call. The other interesting thing is, on the Estonian side, People who spoke Russian went and read the same web website, the same blogs, the same forums, and they could read what these attackers were planning, what tools they were releasing for the population to use. And they could, for example, and this is usually social networking, their social, social wealth, they would tell other people and eventually it will all sink hole to the CERT, even though it wasn't organized, it was ad hoc intelligence. And the CERT would come up and say, tomorrow's DNS day, prepare your DNS servers. This is another tool. I took this from the F-Secure blog or a web blog, which is called DDoS Attacker, again, against Estonia. Neat. More importantly, just let's look at the statistics of the sizes. This is just against the ASO, ASO in the first weekend. The ASO is a 10 megabit line, and the initial filtering was, after the initial filtering, they had about uh, 1.2 megapackets per second. This is from four megapackets per second of ICMP echoes. Now, they employed Cisco Guard, which just happened to have sitting around um, accumulating dust because they wanted to do a pilot or a demo, and they got it down to 150 kilo packets per second. They configured it a little bit more, and this is a mistake in the numbers, but basically from the original 1.2 megapackets per second, they got it down to three kilo packets per second. This is not final numbers in any way. I'm not sure we'll ever have final numbers, but this is a work in progress and that's important to mention. Now, looking at the traffic, and again, we can't be sure yet of everything, there was about three megapackets of ICMP echo, one megapacket of scene attacks, 150 kilo packets of various other attacks, and only out of the four megapackets per second, three kilo packets of legitimate traffic. Now, this was the weekend, so that makes sense. But just to give you a sense of it, it wasn't anything new. Meaning, we have seen bigger attacks. What's the big buzz all about, right? And this is only against the ASO. But we need to realize a few things. One, this was pretty big. Four megapackets may not be the biggest attack we've ever seen. It may not be the attack against the root servers just happened recently. But it's still big. Relatively small compared to that. Still big. More importantly, and we'll repeat that later on, big enough to take them down. They handled it. 
but that's the important point. Now, it was sizable, it was just right for Estonia, and here is the really important point. Whether it was the smallest attack, whether it was just one packet, the impact to Estonia was still significant. This is what really matters here. Now, although we have seen these attacks before, the scale was impressive, meaning from all these many, many different people just sending ping, enter, ping, enter, to the most advanced attacks. Once the blogosphere got fired up, a lot of people said, well, I know security, I know hacking, why should I do ping, enter, ping, enter when I can use my botnet? Right? So everybody was fired up, and they got fired up as well. So there are a few attacks of interest that I would like to, well, two attacks of interest that I would like to discuss. The first was a spam or an email attack against the Estonian parliament's mail servers. And again, this is not final, there, there are not the final numbers, but it originally resulted in two days of downtime. And considering a country that's fully reliant on its internet infrastructure, two days of downtime for the parliament could have been catastrophic if it wasn't in the weekend. So that's a very interesting attack. And there are more than two routers that crashed, or routers, whatever you, however you want to pronounce them, but these, are, these two were interesting. One was just misconfigured. It allowed people to connect directly to the router. Oops. The second just couldn't hold all the traffic. Again, if it's supposed to handle the maximum amount of load that's currently going on, maybe a, bit, a little bit more than that, 100 to 1,000 times more, even if you're a far away node, not good. So let's look at this MRTG graph. This is one of the botnet attacks, or all of the attacks together that happen with the botnet attacks. And you can notice these highs here. And if any of you ever dealt with botnet attacks against networks, you'll know that in some cases, the attackers actually measure you, meaning they launch some sort of attack of two minutes to five minutes long, nothing much more than that. They launch a lot at you, and they disappear. Between an hour to maybe three weeks later, depending on what they feel like, or any other parameters they may choose to use, suddenly all hell breaks loose. Exactly at the right rate to bring you down, not wasting resources. So we can't be sure this is what happened in Estonia. We can't be sure that's a measuring attack, but it sure as hell looks like it. Now, there were some other types of attacks, but when talking about botnets, the interesting thing, again, we do not have complete coverage. The interesting thing is that, as far as we could tell, all the botnet attacks came only from outside of Estonia, meaning computer, compromised computers outside of Estonia, none from within. I'm not sure if these botnets just happened to not have any bots or infected computers inside of Estonia, whether they're doing some OPSEC trying to save their botnet because they didn't. Basically, if you had a bot inside of Estonia and the ISP saw that one of the attack sources came from its own users or the users of its neighbor, they would pick up the phone or fire up their keyboards, <laughs> find out what command and control server that bot was reporting to, and there goes your botnet. So it could be OPSEC making sure that the attacks only come from outside of Estonia. It could also be a plan, because later on, they did launch attacks from within Estonia. Up to this point, there was just one kid who did ping enter, ping enter, ping enter from within Estonia. It was picked up, it was released later on, nothing really happened to him, but that's an interesting point to consider. Now, let's look at this MRTG graph. At some point in one of the, somewhere in the blogosphere, I believe this was on F-Secure's website too. I didn't see it there, I was looking for it today and I couldn't find it. Somebody made a comment about opening a PayPal account and raising funds. They basically said, hey, let's hire a botnet. I wanna buy a botnet to attack Estonia. So a guy came along and said, hey, why pay for a botnet? Here's two. 